Oh shit. Welcome friends to the Steiner P4 XI review. I had to get this done before gun thoughts. Do you want to buy a 17 ounce optic, a one to four power, something with great glass, it's very handy to use, and an optic that whenever you see it is so loved and the community is so wholesome that any time Somebody sees one, they just say, P4XI, gang gang. gang, 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 gang. Well, friends, I bring you the Steiner P4XI. First, we're gonna cover weight for all the spaghetti arms out there. On my scale, this optic weighed in at one pound, 0 0.9 ounces. It's listed at 17.3 ounces in this mount. What it weighs is one pound, 6.6 .6 ounces. That is very good. And whatever setup you're gonna put it on, it's not gonna weigh it down too much, which is excellent. All right, on to dimensions and specs. Your length is 10.3 inches. The width, for some reason, and the height are both listed at six inches. If that's six inches, then I need to call Brazzers and see if I can get a job. I see you don't have a lifeguard here at your beach. I'm not at the beach, this is a bathtub. So you have magnification range of one to four. Your objective lens diameter, for those not in the know, that's right there, is 24 millimeters. You have a 30 millimeter tube. It's a second focal plane optic. 
powered by one CR2032 battery. At 1x, you're looking at 121 feet at 100 yards. At 4x, you're looking at 30 feet at 100 yards. Your eye relief is 3.5 to 4 inches. And when you get your head behind the optic, you will see the P3TR reticle, which has a red dot illumination style. Your adjustments are half MOA. Your reticle and your turrets are matched to MOA. Parallax is fixed at 100 yards. The diopter adjustment range, which I, it's a thing, <laughs> is negative three to two DPT. You can adjust it a lot, I think. Battery life is listed at 10 hours. I'm assuming that's at maximum setting. And has five daylight settings, four low light settings, and two night vision settings, which we'll get into later. You have a fixed parallax of 100 yards, and your water resistance level is listed as waterproof, and water resistance mark is 33 feet. That 33 feet part is gonna be important later. Okay, so we're gonna cover turrets, controls, throw direction, ooh, and your zoom range. So clearly, this is a one to four optic. It has a right to left throw range, and you have clearly marked increments for one, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4. Very incremental on the top end of the spectrum, just like any other LPVO. Uh, 2 and 1.5 are actually pretty close together, and then 1 is pretty far away from 1.5. Turrets. All right, these are cap turrets. You have 100 MOA of total adjustment. You'll notice that we have a half MOA click value. One click equals one half MOA. So two clicks is a whole MOA. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be very quiet. We're gonna go up four clicks and back four clicks so I don't fuck up my zero. They're kind of smushy. There's a little bit of, you know, tactile click, but it's, there's a lot of play and they are audible at least. So it's not super terrible. <laughs> uh, the adjustments for me were really easy to make. And this is one of these optics that you just set and forget. You're not gonna be dialing elevation or windage. Speaking of windage, it's the same exact turret on the side. So set it and forget it. And now on to the most interesting illumination dial there is. There are three, count them, three offsettings. So you have your maximum brightness here and an offsetting and the lowest night vision settings with the hollow circles, the donuts as it were, with an offsetting. And as you rotate it around, there's an offsetting between the two settings that I use. I usually favor this one or that one based on my lighting conditions. So, because there are three off stops, you cannot rotate this clean around. Don't ask me why, it just be like that. So, your maximum settings, there's six daylight, four night, one, two, three, four, and two night. And before we step off this, we're gonna cover eye relief and eye box in this portion. Your eye relief is very generous. I have a rubber band where I put my fat cheek and my eye is usually about right here. It's a very generous eye relief all the way through the magnification range so long as you're planted squarely behind the optic. As far as your eye box goes, meaning how you can twist your head behind the optic before you start getting scope shadow, this is better than say an NX8, but it's only better slightly. It is a tight eye box, but it's not so tight where you can't shoot in different positions. However, it's not Vortex Razor Gen 2 level of eye box. 
Okay, moving off of iBox into glass clarity and image quality. This topic has these two categories because they're both very important to me for an optic. My primary concern when using and grading an optic is how good is the glass, how usable is the reticle. Which, strangely, reticle is right after this topic. <laughs> so your glass clarity. This is possibly the best glass I've ever seen on a 1-4. to four. Steiner glass is well known. It's not Schmidt and Bender glass, but it is German glass. Primarily when you're looking at something like this, you're, because of the price point, going to be comparing it to lower grade optics, but the glass is stellar. The image is very, very flat. It is not a true 1X. It is more like a 1.05, maybe a 1.1. I feel like it's a little under 1.1. The only time you really notice the 1X not being a true 1X is... And it's not inconsequential because it is the range that you will be using it at, but from about 3 yards to 25 yards and anything in between, if you have, say, a light switch or some sort of small object and you're panning, you'll notice it. If you're running the gun quickly, you will not notice it. So the only hit that I'm gonna give this optic is there's no fisheye effect because of the glass quality. It's a very nice image, which we're gonna transition into here shortly. But the 1X is not a true 1X. I have never seen a real true 1X. Every single optic I've looked through does not have a true 1X except for like a T2 or a Comp M5 or an EOTech or something like that. There's no additional magnification there, but for every single LPVO I've noticed that there is some sort of increased magnification at one power. Definitely something to be cognizant of, but it's not going to be, in this optic, anything that slows you down. And I will say if you activate your light while doing that, it actually kind of curbs that a little bit and it's going to be really hard to show you. but. If you are tracking and it's really distracting you, just press that pressure switch and it flattens the image out. And I don't understand why that happens that way, but that's just what I've experienced. Somebody in the comments will figure it out with science and shit. All right, so moving from the phenomenal glass clarity to image quality. Now you're gonna say, isn't that same same? Not quite. There's two things that I look at for image quality. Color breaks down for me like this. When I look at an image, is it true to how my eye sees it, or is it warmer or cooler? And flatness. Now, flatness may seem at first to be counterintuitive, but it's not. Image flatness allows depth perception, so let's break this down. This image quality I've noticed is very, very neutral, which is my preference. If something's warmer, sometimes it'll give you that like brown tinge or sepia toned look, or it'll, it'll just, alter the coloration ever so slightly. And that could really screw you over for browns or someone wearing camouflage. It's hard to distinguish like a slightly lighter green versus a darker green or, you know, browns, stuff like that. Earth tones are harder to see because it's warmed it to the point where it's muddying that image. This image quality is very true, very neutral and I have detected no tint whatsoever. It's a very crystal clear light transmission and image quality and I'm very, very pleased with it. A cooler look would be more like a blue tint which you see with some MROs and some red dots in general or cheaper optics. Image flatness for this optic is very, very good. I know it's just a one to four. I know there's not a lot of expectations but for me, target discrimination is very important. Keeping the image flat and the shapes true is very important. I know a lot of guys say edge to edge clarity. I don't like saying that because YouTube reviewers will always say edge to edge clarity. Like every optic has edge to edge clarity. What I will say is there's no bending at the edge of this optic that I have seen at one or four power. So I don't have that issue. 
I don't see the images twisting or warping as I'm transitioning or, or tracking a target. When I move my SR16 out to try and engage something, I don't, I don't get distracted by how it, I have this like telescoping fishbowl effect. It's a very flat, very clean image. And edge to edge clarity is a thing. This optic does have superior edge to edge clarity, especially for what it is. But I don't want to get snapped up with all these other YouTubers that literally every optic has edge to edge clarity when it doesn't. I give this high marks for color and flatness. Going into the reticle, this reticle is very simple. And if you've used either the new uh, PST 1 to 6 Gen 2, I think, I'm not sure. Essentially, the, the copy of the Vortex Razor. 1 to 6 Gen 2 E or Gen 2 or whatever. It has a very similar reticle. It's an MOA BDC reticle where the reticle is black and you have a projected red dot in the center. So very, very simple. I'll roll through Straylock here. Now this is a second focal plane optic which has its benefits and disadvantages. This reticle will not swell in size as the magnification increases. The reticle is fine enough and for those of us with astigmatism, I have just enough astigmatism for it to suck. I don't have a lot but I have a slight astigmatism so every red dot looks like a star that's diagonal to the top left and the bottom right. So it's not quite an oval, and I know some people see like two or three or something like that. Mine's just kind of a cockeyed star. This reticle is really good because I can modulate the LED brightness to give me a nice crystal clear dot on top of that reticle, which really helps me with astigmatism. So if you're primarily a dot shooter, this reticle is really going to speak to you because it's a very simple crosshair that gets thinner as it goes in. It's not obtrusive like um, an NX-8 is at, at max power. And it's there enough to give you a solid reference for an aiming point, and it's not so obtrusive as to distract you from shooting. I'll also say the subtensions, the width is for 19 inches. So a shoulder width of 19 inches instead of 18 like the ACSS uses. I guess Germans are just thicker. I don't know dummy thick but by and large it's a very very easy reticle to use once you I have it zeroed for 50 slash 200 yards so it has a 200 yard zero the subtensions based on atmospherics it seems uh, decide whether they want to be dead on or not they are very incremental and based on my stray lock app for 4x which I'll show you here again it's very solid. Now with second focal plane, just as a cautionary tale here, I like to shoot first focal plane optics because I don't always shoot max power. This you're either shooting at one or four. So keep that in mind and your zero is different literally every magnification range. So you go from one to 1 1.5, your drop is different. You go from 1.5 to two, different. Two to two and a half, different. Three, three and a half, four, different. Three and four I think are the closest but there's a lot going on there, so just be cognizant of that. However, I do really like this reticle despite how simplistic it is. It also really helps me close range bracket targets with the exterior um, subtensions on the east, west, and north. Very, very quick at close range. All right, something everybody asks, is the illumination daylight bright? Yes, and that is, an objective analysis that I've gathered from multiple shooters and myself. For some reason red is really loud to my eye so the red really just pops to my eye. I don't need to increase brightness like a lot of guys you know tend to favor. I don't like that melt your retinas bright. No I couldn't because I'm blind. <laughs> so it distracts me actually so I, I kind of run it just a touch above barely able to see it based on whatever lighting condition I'm in. Just keep that in mind. But yes, the illumination is daylight bright. So what kind of optic is this? Is this a three gun optic, a military optic, or a tactical optic, which is kind of in the middle? 
it's a tactical optic. A three gun optic is something you don't care about, you'll throw on your rifle. A tactical optic will take basic uh, home defense scenarios, SWAT scenarios, something where you step from a permissive environment into a non-permissive environment and back into the permissive environment, usually within the same day. It will take abuse. It is shock resistant. The operating temperature is 145 degrees Fahrenheit for the hot and the cold is negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can put up with some punishment. A military optic is extended periods and non-permissive environments, constantly getting beat up and all sorts of other stuff. Steiner, Trijicon, Night Force, they all have their military style optics. And then there's that tactical bracket. I can comfortably say, well, this is duty rated essentially, and it is marketed as a law enforcement optic. This does fall in that tactical category. I'm gonna highlight what it's good at and what it's bad at. All right, what it's good at. So you're looking at a lighter optic that's perfect for a lighter setup. So if you have a short boy like I do, or if you have a 14.5 or a 16 that's on a diet, so you have an SR16, let's say, for a 16 inch, a 14 and a half that's really, really light. We're talking a rifle that tops out about six or seven pounds. This is a perfect addition to it because that eight pound mark is a really, really good weight for a fighting rifle. And there's people that are gonna fight me on that, but eight pounds is heavy enough to stay on target and light enough to move around confidently when you have all this stuff on it. So just something to think about. It's excellent for close quarters combat engagements out to 400 yards. This optic marketed by Steiner is for 400 yards essentially. You can push it out further and there are subtensions to support that. I guess if you want to you know, tempt fate and make a crazy long shot. Uh, it's possible if you dial it to the right magnification, you know your holds. But realistically, close quarters combat optic out to 400 yards. I've pushed this out to 312 confidently. 400 would be about the max that I would be confident running this, both this setup, these rounds, and this optic out to. And this is 77 grain TMK. That's performance ammunition. It's listed as being night vision capable. I have no way to test that. The only night vision experience I've had was on deployment in 5th Fleet and it they were really not good <laughs> NVGs. So when I get NVGs, I'll test it. But you do with that what you will. It's great for tactical applications and limited military applications. So it's very, very well tested by Steiner. It's very overbuilt. And realistically, it has the performance characteristics of a 34 millimeter tube optic. These save the battery life being better in the Trijicon. This optic has the depth and shock testing of the Trijicon. So I'm looking at a smaller optic. Usually 17 ounce optics are more fragile. And just to balance it against other 30, and to be honest, 30 millimeter tube optics, most guys when they're getting an optic, they're getting a 30 millimeter tube optic. Just to compare it against a few favorites, all 30 millimeter tube optics, and two of these are not the same magnification range, so don't fight me. In my mind, the competitor that's on this optics coattails is the Trijicon, AccuPower, and now Credo, one to four, and the waterproof depth of this is 33 feet. Both of the Trijicons, and I love Trijicons, are 10 feet. When you move to the SWFA SS 1 to 4, which is also touted as a favorite in this class of optics, you get waterproof level, yes. That's all it says. Just yes. When you go to the Swamp Fox Tomahawk, which people also love apparently, that says Water resistance level, IPX TAC 7. I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna look it up because everyone else can list what a normal thing is. <laughs> Your Vortex Viper PST simply says yes. The Night Force NX8 says yes. And to be honest, I was gonna put this up against the ACSS Raptor, but I can't see that it's waterproof anywhere. I'm sure it's water waterproof and fogproof, but they don't list anything. 
So when you're looking at the most commonly supported optics and even going into a one to eight that's very expensive, this has a better depth. And you're gonna say, I'm not swimming with this idiot. Good, but the way Steiner tests their optics, they'll put this on a mount and then beat it to death with a pneumatic punch or hammer or something like that to shock test it. The water resistance depth to me is not the most important for water resistance depth. But what it actually says to me is it can put up with punishment in the elements. So I don't have to worry about this thing being flimsy or not able to deal with what I'm gonna put it through. And down here in Florida, we get a lot of rain, we get a lot of wind, and we have a lot of fine sand, even at our gun ranges that are inland. So there's a lot of stuff that can happen this optic is going to put up with that punishment. That's what those statistics say to me. And those other optics, though still good, are a little less robust. So just keep that in mind. As I mentioned before, your red dot is really, really good for people with astigmatism. And because of how the red dot is projected, it's really, really good for people that are primarily red dot shooters. They want a simple reticle. Where's my dot? That's where I'm going to put that bullet. That's all they care about. So it's great for a red dot shooter or someone who wants to take a first step into the LPVO world. This optic is, in my mind, and a lot of other people's realistically, the king of the one to fours. You're never going to find someone that talks shit about this optic. It's very, very solid. And unfortunately, because of this, the price has risen past the point where I'm comfortable continuing to purchase them until they come back down. So for a while these were like 480 and this is transitioning into the bad and this there's only really two negative points to this and right now the price is a huge one. It has gone up to high eights low nines and that is insane to me. I think this optic is a deal at $600. I think at $500 it's a screaming deal and if you can get it for under five buy two of them or three of them. It's a stellar optic and it definitely hits outside of its weight class, but again, it's not a $900 optic. It does it does have the features and glass and quality and it will last you like a $900 optic will. So $900 is like what their MSRP is now, I guess. <laughs> and with all this craziness going on, I'm sure someone will pay it. But realistically, nah fam. Get it at about $600, it's still a deal at that price. The other disadvantage is the eye box. It's not terrible like an NX-8 where you literally have to duct tape your head to the same position if you wanna get a hit. You can use this on a car hood or in unconventional shooting positions, but it's not gonna be your best friend. The eye relief is great, and even at four power, if you have solid head placement and you're in the eye box and you dial it up, you don't really see the tube effect. If you're at the edge of the eye box, like you're 4.1, 4.2 inches, where you're just outside of it and you can see scope shadow, you dial that up, you are gonna get more scope shadow. It's gonna tighten the image. But if you're on the optic properly, you're set. So price and eye box are the biggest concerns I have. And uh, this is more of a neutral field territory kind of gripe here. If you have a lot of 34 millimeter tube optics and you jump to a 30, you do feel that width restriction. I know the Vortex Razor and possibly the Primary Arms have some voodoo slot magic going on that I don't understand because they have these crazy eye boxes and it doesn't feel like you're looking through a 30 millimeter tube, even though it is a 30 millimeter tube. There are some optics that do some crazy things like that, but by and large with this optic, it's, if you're jumping from a 34 to this, you will notice it. Okay, so to close out, optics and reticles are very, very subjective. So I'm not gonna disparage you if this isn't for you, but what I will say is, if you're looking for a one to four to fit your application, and one to four is still very viable, don't let someone talk you out of it, because it's not enough magnification, bro. If you're looking for something like this, this is the optic. Everyone that has one loves it. You'll not find anyone in the community that talks shit about this optic. There's people that have had them, sold them, and bought them back because they miss it. It is a very, very solid and reliable optic. The glass quality allows you to see more out of a one to four than 
other optics and even some one to sixes with glass quality that's not on this level or not as clear. So you're really looking at something that's an excellent optic to do a lot of stuff. It's not a sniper optic. You're not gonna be cranking off super tight groups at 300 yards, it's not gonna happen. But if you need something that's reliable, that's gonna constantly be there for you, you pick it up, you know how to use it, it's simple, you're only engaging out to three, 400 yards, and it's gonna take all the punishment you throw at it, look no further than the Steiner P4 XI. Definitely one of the heroes of the gun community that has earned its rep. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. And take care out there.